It's happening. Good morning, my friends. I am in the drive through line for Tim Hortons in Erie, Pennsylvania. So, I don't know what this video is going to become. I am focused on filming more of obviously like what I am seeing because I filmed this video. Okay, background. If anyone just clicked on this, they don't know who I am. One, you're welcome. Two, let me give you some context. So about six weeks ago, I drove from my home in Colorado out to the tippy tips of Massachusetts. Why did I say it that way? I don't know. Sometimes I say very basic things in strange ways and the sun is right there. Anyway, so I drove out to Massachusetts and I spent a lot of time there and I had a really good time and I felt like I really got what I needed. And now I am excited to go back home to Colorado. So I'm driving back to Colorado from Massachusetts. Yesterday I did not film anything because there didn't seem to be much to say or film because a lot of it was just scenery that like I've already shown you guys on a lot of my other videos. So, but today I have obviously woken up in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm a little bit confused by this place that it's just like, I wonder how does one end up in Erie, Pennsylvania? And I don't mean to sound judgmental. I know that that naturally is a judgmental question, but it's like, I just don't know. I don't know. Like why do people live here? <laughs> I clearly don't understand. So I'm sure someone in the comments will enlighten me. A keyboard warrior will let me know what's great about Pennsylvania. But um, I mean, actually, I bet like the more rural parts are really awesome. I'm specifically wondering about Erie because Erie, I picked to stay here because I, when I drove to Massachusetts, I drove through here and the way that it took me is it went along the lake. And there was a part that was like really pretty and I was like, oh, this is, it could be cool to stay in Erie, Pennsylvania. But where I stayed in Erie is like not cute. I mean, it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain. But anyway, I should get off this camera because there's a lot of um, action going on in the drive through So update in a minute. And there's a Dunkin' Donuts right next door to Tim Hortons. You can't see it very well, but the driveway is way less hopping than ye old Tim Hortons, you can't tell anything that I'm looking at. Does that mean that there are a lot of Canadians in Erie? Or does that mean that Tim Hortons is just better coffee than Dunkin' and everyone in Erie knows it? I am personally at Tim Hortons because it's a place that, yeah, we definitely don't have in Colorado. I've noticed that there tends to be a lot of Tim Hortons kind of near the Canadian border, but um, if you go anywhere else in the United States, people are like, what is Tim Hortons? Wow, this is really pretty. Maybe this is why people live in Erie, Pennsylvania. I am currently at Presque State Park, I think it's called. Um, I hope you can see that there's the water out there through the trees. I bet like, so right now fall is obviously just sort of beginning. But I bet when like fall is like full on, it is like freaking amazing here. Okay, we're going park. Okay, I feel life coming back into me again. This is so perfect. This is exactly the view I wanted while I eat my Tim Hortons. So Tim Hortons. I want to know some opinions from other people about what you think about it. This is officially my second time eating Tim Hortons food, or I should just say, well, I guess it was their food and coffee because when I was going to Massachusetts, I stopped at a Tim Hortons in Dearborn, Michigan. And yeah, oh my God, this is so cool. I am such a weirdo in that like sometimes, especially if I'm traveling alone, I can get so stressed that I won't want to stop. Like, I'll just be like, let's just get on the road. Let's get out there and just get to wherever the F we have to be next. And so I can really miss stuff like this. And to be honest, you guys, this morning I woke up, I had a headache. I was just feeling like, oh my God, today's a long haul day. Like, I do not want to stop and try to figure out stuff to film. And I am so freaking glad I forced myself to go to Tim Hortons and then forced myself to come here 
because this is actually like super beautiful like the way the sunlight is and just there's like a little kid scootering around it's like one of those just wonderful moments that you could easily miss if you're not paying attention and I'm glad I forced myself to pay attention Tim Hortons your coffee is consistently good that's I think why I wanted to come back was because I was actually really impressed by the coffee that I had in Dearborn so I wanted to know is lightning lightning gonna strike twice and will it be good you know in Erie Pennsylvania and it is it's like really good coffee and I'm honestly I am a coffee snob like usually I'm the kind of person like I will never go to chain places unless it's for like some fetishy drink like some pumpkin thing um, but otherwise like I, I really like you know high class coffee but this tastes very high class so good job Tim Hortons I'm impressed with you Canadians oh my god look at this duck in the sunshine it's behind the bush but we still got him that accent might become a permanent part of my repertoire, so I'm sorry about that. This entire video might just be me sitting in the car filming the duck on the lake in this amazing sunshine. The epitome of road trip food. There it is. I hope this is as good and as dirty as it looks. Okay, I'm just going to take it out of the paper. That's pretty good. This duck is so cool. He's just like right in front of me. He's not like go anywhere. But he's just like directly in like this sunshine path. Whenever I'm done with this, I'm going to get out. We're going to have a little interview with him. That's right. I said interview. It's happening. Mr. Bird, why do you choose to live in a place like Erie, Pennsylvania? Okay. Someone just said good morning to me, but I was talking to the bird. <laughs> do you guys like Tim Hortons as much as I do? I mean, you guys are Canadian, right? I asked her why she lived in Erie, Pennsylvania, and she just threw, flew away. Great. I guess if I had to uh, live here, I could do it. I mean, if I could live, like, maybe, like, right on the lake, I could do it. I'm the kind of person that needs to, I guess, And I guess Pennsylvania is one of those places. I haven't given it enough credit. I haven't seen enough of it to like truly know it. So anyway, I feel like I just got schooled in Pennsylvania life. All right, guys. So today is actually my longest driving day. Yesterday was just eight hours to get to Erie. And today it's going to be nine and a half hours to get from Erie to East Moline, Illinois or Iowa. I'm like going to that place. It's like Davenport, Iowa and East Moline are like right next to each other on the borders of Iowa and Illinois. And it's actually where my grandfather grew up. My grandfather who's passed away, he would be like in his 90s now if he were still alive, but he grew up in like the 30s and 40s in in Davenport, Iowa or East Moline. They're all it's kind of the same place to me. I've never actually been there, but like the way it looks on the map, it's all the same. So um, so yeah, nine and a half hours, it's my longest day. So we gotta get going, y'all, let's go. Oh yeah, we're getting places fast. Welcome to Ohio. I don't know how to say that in a really exciting way, but I believe I'm in like Western Ohio now. I've been driving for about three hours since we left Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah, this has been, it's been like a really fun, is that the right, it's not the right word. As I was saying, it feels wrong. It's not fun, but it's been very easy. It's been a much easier drive psychologically so far than my drive out east. So I don't know what's up with that. And that could change, like knock on wood, it doesn't change. But you know, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow will be my worst day ever. But I have to show you guys, I'm obviously at a gas station. Well, maybe not, obviously you can't really see, but um, I was just in the gas station bathroom and I'm going to insert some footage that I took on my phone.
Is that not the most amazing thing you've ever seen in any bathroom? Not to mention a gas station bathroom. Like it's legit, that Leonardo DiCaprio poster was legit installed in that bathroom in like 1997 when that picture was created after Leonardo DiCaprio did Romeo and Juliet. And I am just like, I couldn't believe how cool, like ironically cool, because this bathroom doesn't even know that that's cool. I feel like they don't know out here in this part of Ohio. I'm in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. They don't even understand like how cool it is that they have that in the bathroom. And I'm sure that the lady at the, um, because they had this thing where like the doors to the bathrooms were all wide open probably so that like, I don't know, people can't do weird stuff in there. So the lady at the counter like could see me in there like pulling out my phone, like filming just a little bit of that, um, amazing Leonardo DiCaprio vintage 90s um fangirl stuff and she probably was like oh my god or maybe we'll do that a lot maybe people go in that bathroom not expecting to see it's like because there's nothing else in the bathroom it's like just a normal bathroom and then there's this big like four mica thing of like Leonardo DiCaprio like the like original fangirl poster that came out of him totally Romeo and Juliet era. Anyway, I need to shut up about it, but I was just like, the unexpected things you find as you travel across America are just amazing. So anyway, so I'm, I'm in fairly good spirits right now. I think I'm like 200 miles from the Chicago area, which I'm not looking forward to driving through. I have like some fear about driving through. Although as I say that, I'm like, don't say that. Don't say you're afraid, but just, I don't know. It's like, it's just not a fun part to drive through. It wasn't fun coming this way, but maybe I'll have a totally different experience going back. Like maybe there won't be as much traffic. It won't seem as weird. So we'll see. But, um, but yeah, so we got a few more, I mean, we have like six more hours, so a lot more hours, but I'll, I'll try to, I'll keep you guys updated. Let me show you a little bit of what I'm looking at. So you just really get the full picture. I'm at the Sunico gas station. And I don't know the name of the town I'm in, but I think this is like a beautiful bar slash home or something. They put their Trump flag in the back so no one will see it except their friends and me. Anyway, and then there's this is the trucker side of the gas station. So I just thought I would show you like where I'm at because that was one of my requests was to see what I'm looking at. And <laughs> this is what I'm looking at. So let's keep driving. I will update you in the future. <laughs> Y'all, I don't even know how long it's been. Wow, my face looks really red. I hope I didn't get sunburned. That's very possible though. It's a lot hotter. Like it was really cool um, east. And now that I'm in, I'm in jo Joliet, Jolet, Illinois. I don't know how to say it, but um, but I've stopped for gas again. It's it's the next time I've stopped after the last time I stopped. So for you, it's been like two seconds. And for me, it's been like, I don't even know, like hours. Cause I've gone backwards in time. So I've kind of, I don't even know how long I've been driving, but I have about two hours left. Maybe a little bit less than two hours of my drive to get to East Moline. So I have not much to tell you because it's just, I'm definitely feeling it guys. Like I think maybe it's the heat, but also the stress of, like I said, like I was nervous about driving through that like kind of lower Chicago area. And the reason is because it's like very intense, like 12 lane traffic. And it's like both times I did it, it's like a lot of cars, a lot of semis. It just feels extra intense because obviously the whole highway is like semis and cars, but like something about that spot and I'm still kind of in it. I think I'm just kind of coming out of it. That's why I finally stopped because I wanted to get through it before I stopped. But um, anyway, it's just not fun. So I'm feeling a little like just like too much adrenaline rush from like getting through all that. So anyway, but I have not booked my hotel for tonight. I haven't done that like ever where I've just sort of driven and not really had like an exact location of where I'm going. I'm kind of done with the Airbnb thing. I did that last night. It kind of wasn't a very good choice because you really don't know what you're going to get with that. Like at least with a hotel, like you sort of know like what to expect. Like it's like a standard thing you get. So I think I'm going to look up on my phone right now before I get back on the road. Like what are my options for when I get to East Moline slash Davenport. I really don't care which state or they're like the same place basically. 
but obviously Davenport is slightly farther west, so let's do it. Okay, that was actually fairly easy. I just picked a random La Quinta, and that's the deal. Welcome to my beautiful La Quinta hotel room with this amazing view of the dumpster and the um, pickup truck front. I guess that would technically be like a Mack truck, not a pickup truck, but whatever. So I am officially like exhausted. I think today, nine and a half hours of driving is definitely my limit in terms of what I can do in a day. Now I know I didn't push it too far. We just nine and a half hours. That's good. Good morning. It's time to start day three of this road trip and I'm suddenly feeling a little more vulnerable about going and seeing my um I guess I guess what I'm going to do is try to find the grave of my it's too early to think but the grave of my great grandmother so my grandpa's mom was buried here in Moline, Illinois um so that's what we're gonna do this morning because we got time we got a shorter drive so that's what we gonna do no tim hortons today we are doing red band coffee in davenport okay one good morning two i just had a really interesting experience where i went into this place it looks fucking awesome, um, called Red Band Coffee Company in Davenport, Iowa. I haven't gone anywhere, guys. I'm still in Moline, but Moline, Illinois, and Davenport, Iowa are like basically connected. There's like a little river that goes through them, and that's the border between Illinois and Iowa. So I'm basically in the same place. I'm basically still in Moline, but I'm across the river, so I'm in Davenport, Iowa now. So I went to this coffee place, and nobody was wearing a mask wearing a mask and this is my first experience of going into a place that doesn't require people to wear a mask because most places like I'm used to like when you're out in public like when you're outside and not, not not everyone wears a mask but usually most stores that I've seen across the country have some sort of um rule about wearing a mask when you go inside but that this place maybe it's all of that Davenport Moline whatever there's no rule. I mean, the lady at the cash register, she had like a bandana on, but like all of the customers coming in didn't have masks. So anyway, I'm saying this just to say that suddenly I felt like shamed, <laughs> which is totally my own self-creation, but I felt it, but it feels weird to be the only one doing something, especially when you know that the whole mask thing is like politically charged now. And I don't even want to get into it. Like it's not, it's, you know, whatever. But, um, but I just was surprised at like how I felt like the black sheep, like I was somehow like the weird one because I, w I wore a mask going in and absolutely nobody else. There was like four other people in there and nobody, and there was pe there's people outside like kind of drinking their coffee. And, uh, yeah, and I am the only one that had a mask on. Really good coffee though. I haven't had a really good latte in a long time. So it seemed like a really cool place. I definitely would recommend going there. I also got a fried egg sandwich. That's kind of awesome. But I think what what my plan is, is we're gonna go to the cemetery to visit my great grandma. I've been in a lot of cemeteries over the last six weeks, like a lot, a lot of, a lot of death. So we're gonna do that, because why not? All right. Okay, this is kind of a big, cemetery. I don't know how I'm going to find her. I have no idea where she is. So we'll just see what happens. I do feel like I noticed that like the front of the grave the graveyard was like the older part and the back is like the newer, you know, graves. So we're in the back. So we need to go back to the front. So I think I'm going to go and then park in the front. If it weren't for all the bugs on my windshield, this would be a really pretty view. So I'm gonna take one minute to eat my sandwich and then we're gonna get out and explore. This is a ginormous cemetery and 
so now I'm in the older part, I think, but now it's like the really old part. Like I just passed some graves that looked, you know, like really old. Um, Bessie, I believe, passed away sometime in the 1960s, I want to say. I don't really know for sure, but that's about the timeline I would assume she died. Obviously, I have no idea who this woman is. I only just heard about her recently from my dad, so. <laughs> but I'm related. She's my great-grandma. She's my dad's dad's mom. So, you know, that's fairly close in relation, so. <sighs> we will do this. First, I'm going to eat my sandwich. Oh, this looks very fancy. It's on, like, artisan bread or something. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Focus. Fo oh, yes. I just got, like, the basic egg and cheese, and that's good for me. So, I'm going to eat this. And I'm gonna enjoy it. Not bad, Moline, Illinois. Not bad. Okay, so from what I have learned about Bessie, she was not wealthy by any means. And right now I'm standing kind of at the graves with a view over here. I'm assuming the graves with a view are a little bit more expensive. So I'm not sure if she's over here. Her name is I think I've said it, is Bessie Reed, R-E-E-D, because she remarried some guy named Reed, obviously in the second half of her life. Um, if we find her grave, I'm going to give you a little bit of a story time about Bessie and my grandfather, Chuck Rogers. Do you see the name Bessie? I sure don't. I feel like she's not in this part. Well, let's take a jaunt down this creepy little road. It's actually quite beautiful in many ways. This is actually really cute. It almost looks like a, like a farm graveyard or something. I really don't know if I have the patience to find my great-grandmother, but it is really cool to be here. I mean, it's made me very reflective on my grandpa and imagining him growing up here, especially being in Moline. Um, like, I could totally see him there. Like, he just feels like, yeah, this is a place that Chuck would freaking grow up. Um, and he grew up really poor. So the story of his mom is that she got pregnant with him when she was 19 by a guy in his 30s. And they briefly got married after she got pregnant. And then the guy like split pretty soon after my grandpa was born. So my great grandmother, Bessie, was like this young, you know, 20 year old single, single mother and um, and also was very poor. She was poor before she got pregnant. She was obviously poor, you know, after. And this is in the 1920s that this happened. So, and it, and it was very taboo to be, you know, a young single mom. I mean, you know, that's just kind of how it was. So she just, yeah, she raised my grandpa on her own. She then got pregnant again by another guy that I think she did remarry, but it was like maybe six years after my grandpa was born. So he had a younger sibling who was like a bit younger than him by a different dad. And the story goes that that kid was kidnapped when the kid was like two or three, because I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know if she got divorced again, but she was again a single mom. I feel like I'm missing some holes in the story because I've heard it told kind of differently a couple different times, but so, and this all happened here in Moline, Illinois. So they're living here. She's again single. I don't know if she, yeah, divorced again. And she had a neighbor friend, a couple, like an older couple, who would watch the kids. My grandpa and his brother. Apparently it was a boy. But, um, <laughs> so one day these neighbors just decided to take the brother. Like the kid is only like two years old. They didn't take my grandpa because by that time he's like eight or nine. He's like too old to kidnap and like, you know, brainwash to believe that like, you know, the other couple is his parents, whereas the two year old, you could do that. And since it's like the 1920s or maybe the early 30s by that point, like there's like nothing she could do. She just came home from work and, you know, my grandpa was home, but 
this other kid, it's like that family just like up and left the house. The house was empty, the kid was gone and just never heard from or seen again. And it was like, there's no cell phones or like cameras or like ways to track them. Like, and she was poor, so what are you gonna do? So, so my grandpa, Chuck, spent a lot of his life like trying to find his lost brother and never succeeded. And so now my dad has like kind of inherited the obsession of trying to figure out like where this kid went. So now that we have like DNA testing and stuff, he's been really focused on trying to use like our ancestry DNA that we all did to try to locate this person through DNA, but he's still not found the person. But it's just, it's, it's interesting because I, like I said earlier, like I've never really related that much to that part of my family. I've always related more in terms of my identity to my mother's family, who's much more Irish and creative. Whereas my dad's family is very German and poor and <laughs> like pull yourself up from your bootstraps, but also never actually succeed because you just stay poor forever like that's just how that family feels in some ways and being here I mean and seeing my seeing my grandpa's hometown it I feel that it feels very German here like seeing all the graves there's a there's a theme of like it's a very Nordic last name theme in this graveyard and yeah and, it, and just the way this town looks like I can just imagine him growing up in some tiny tiny town on the wrong side of the tracks it's the other thing he would talk about how he was my gr my grandfather would say, you know, they lived on the wrong side of the tracks, you know, growing up. And my dad even sent me his address, and I'm not sure if I'm going to go over there. I honestly, we probably just told you about it, so we probably are. It's not like we don't have anything else to do, so we probably are. But um, but what a crazy story, though, right? And it's also crazy to think that, like, like because Bessie got pregnant accidentally at 19, you know, she led to all these other people existing. And it's kind of crazy, like the legacy that we create just by having kids, like it seems like so obvious and simple in some ways, but it's like this woman that I don't even relate to because I never knew her. She died long before I was conceived. Um, you know, she's, if she hadn't had my grandfather and he hadn't have had my dad, you know, all of this, this video wouldn't exist and we would all be sad. So wherever you are in this graveyard, Bessie, I hope you are resting well. God, I don't you hate it when your car smells like food? Like now that I've eaten that like egg thing, I feel like my car is like overly, um, overly foody smelling. I do not like it. But let's see how far away this supposed address of my grandfather's home is. It's only two miles away. All right, let's go. Okay, here we are. The actual, like, oh, that was cool. Birds flew over the car. The actual address that my dad gave me does not exist. But this is the street, and these are the houses. It looks like an okay neighborhood. Now, very modest, small house that you can tell, yeah, we're born, uh, born, <laughs> we're made, you know, probably in the 30s and 40s. Never thought that I would end up visiting some random place that my grandpa grew up on this road trip. I mean, when I say it's a coincidence that I ended up here, it really, truly is. So, very interesting. There's a little kid just standing in his car watching me like slowly drive down the road, filming myself. This is the kind of life that I live now. These are all cute, modest homes though. Not bad. Okay, Moline, it's been fun, but it's time for me to get some gas and then get back on the road because we are going to Nebraska today, y'all. Woo, Nebraska! I am kind of embarrassed, you guys. So as I was leaving Moline, Illinois, I was like driving down some street, like I was trying to get back to the highway. I was driving down the street and I was like looking at all the buildings and stuff, I was not paying attention and I totally just blew through a four-way stop. 
And luckily, because there was like, it was like totally empty streets. It was like me and there was one other car that was initially in front of me that was turning right. So they were like fully stopped at the stop sign and they had their blinker on that they were turning right and they, you know, were stopped there. And then I, because it was such a subtle stop sign, like there were no like road markings. It was just sort of like, by the time I already got up to the stop sign and realized I was like blowing through it, I just was already through, so I just kept going. But this person that was initially turning right, when they saw me just like blow through the stop sign, suddenly they became like, we're gonna make a citizen's arrest on this person. <laughs> Cause they started following me, like they turned off their turns. They're no longer going right. They went straight to follow me and I was like kind of freaking out because I was like, oh my God, in Moline, Illinois, this doesn't feel like the place to have like the residents like freak out at you. And luckily I'm assuming they must have just noticed that like my plates are from Colorado. I'm just like a very confused white lady. And so they must have deduced that like I made a mistake and I was, was, was not paying attention obviously because I was looking around at stuff and I just didn't even see that there was a four-way stop. Luckily there was also no other cars. Like there was nothing around. It was just me and this other car. And so luckily no harm, no foul in that sense. But I was so embarrassed and it was not a good start to my drive. Um, and I'm so grateful that person did not follow me onto the highway. As I was turning onto the highway, I was like, okay, well you can follow me all the way to Nebraska if you want, but um, it's just scary because you don't know if people are going to be dangerous, you know? Like, I don't know if I would have pissed off that person so much that they really would be, like, following me or threatening me somehow. So, it's just, I'm, I feel, I am feel stupid and embarrassed that I, like, made such a dumb mistake to just, like, blow through a four-way stop. But I also am grateful that whoever this person was that I, like, offended so deeply that I didn't stop at the stop sign, like, didn't follow me. But anyway. So, I am now in somewhere in Iowa. I don't even know. I've passed Des Moines. I'm like an hour west of Des Moines, I want to say. So, so yeah, I'm in like the middle of Iowa and we're just making good time, I guess. I am going to Nebraska. I think I have a little over three hours left of my drive today. So it's definitely a shorter day. And there's a part of me that's like, oh, I want to just drive all the way through to Colorado. Like, I just don't even want to stop anymore. I just want to get to my home. But if I did that, and I still could, who knows, I might go crazy and just decide to stick to it. I wouldn't get into Colorado until like close to midnight if I actually decided to just keep driving. And then just knowing me, I don't think that's going to work out very well in terms of like my stamina and my resilience to just keep going. Like, and I also don't think it would be very safe. So... I probably won't do that, but it's definitely an idea in the back of my head that's like, why don't I just like keep going and just like go out? Like, why would I stay the night in freaking Nebraska? But I think it would be safer and just smarter to stay in Nebraska. So, but we'll see. Once I get to where I'm going there, which I think I'm actually going to stay in, um, I think it's called Grand Island, Nebraska. Like that seems like a good spot to stop. Um, once I get there, we'll see how I feel. And if I feel like I can go farther, then I'll go farther. And if not, then I won't. But, um, but otherwise, there's not much to show you. This is kind of, you know, I'm, I'm officially in like the West and it's, there's just not the Western Plains, I should say. There's a lot of windmills, farms, but not a lot else. So there's a subway, representing subway. All right, bye. McGee right now. I don't even know how that happened. My windows have been down the whole time. But I am. I just checked my phone to see where, I mean, I'm obviously in Nebraska, but like, I'm check, I checked to see how far from home I am. And I'm exactly six and a half hours from my house in Boulder, Colorado. And I am now officially like, fuck it. I am not going to spend any more money to stay in some shitty middle American you know, La Quinta or whatever, like no hate on La Quinta, like they do a good job, you know, whatever. But I just, I'm over it. Like I'm ready to stay at my house. So like six and a half hours away. So I am ready to grow a big, fat, hairy pussy wop because balls are small and sensitive and not strong. I don't know why people say grow a pair, like grow balls when you're trying to be strong because balls are the least strong thing in the world. So I'm gonna grow just a big old hairy pussy and drive the next six and a half hours to get home. And yeah, this was totally not a part of the plan. Um, I did not intend for this. 
we'll see if I can stick to it. If something happens over the next six hours where all of a sudden I really hit a wall and I get really tired and it doesn't feel safe to drive anymore, then I will stop and I'll find a place to stay. But right now I feel pretty good. Like I'm definitely tired because um, I've been driving, you know, six hours so far. Like I'm halfway there. Like I have to do another six hours to get back to Boulder. But um, so I'm tired, but I don't feel like I should stop because if I were to do my original plan, I would be driving one more hour and then stopping in Kearney or Grand Island. I couldn't decide which, but like, it's only an hour away from here and I just feel like it's ridiculous. Like, why would I stop in an hour when I could just grow that walk? I guess, I don't know if I should be saying that, but I just love it. There's a part of me that's just a gross human being. But, um, yeah, so I'm gonna try to do it, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. Wish me luck. What? So I kinda can't believe it, but we made it home last night. And by we, I mean you and literally me. Literally you and me. So today I'm feeling honestly like a little bit out of it like after three days of driving and unexpectedly doing that 12 hour or a little bit over 12 hour push that I honestly didn't think I would be capable of. I really didn't think I was going to follow through when I initially got that idea yesterday morning. I did not know that I was actually going to do it. So yeah, I'm just trying to soak in being back in beautiful Boulder, Colorado with my pupper. And I'm reflecting a bit on the past, um, well, honestly, for me, the past like six weeks, because this whole journey started with my first solo trip. Oh, the dog has picked up on a fun friend. Oh, oh another dog walked by and Bub gets very excited when that happens. So, sorry, I've got something in my eye. So this journey started, you know, about six weeks ago when I, you know, did my first trek when I drove from here out to Massachusetts and that was such a different drive such a different adventure than the one that I experienced coming back home and I don't know I've learned a lot I feel like one I never really want to do a drive like that again at least not by myself I don't want to do that it is it is very psychologically taxing like more so um more so than you might think. I don't at least for me, it just it gets old to be in the car eight or nine hours a day or twelve hours if it's yesterday. And um and just be by yourself and the road. I mean there's also some very therapeutic things about that. But um but for me I'm I think I'm done with that kind of driving. So anyway I won't ramble on too long but I just wanted to end the video here that I'm back, I am ready to create some even more exciting content for you guys now that I'm back in Boulder. And yeah, I will see you in my next video.